اوكي هشام ازيك؟ تمام كل صباح القشطه Um, welcome to the Lessons Podcast. Abla Maribda, I just wanted to quickly thank you for being on here. I really appreciate it. When uh, Maharda, Ehna Hanikarlem Ala Arek, our journey Ptatak, and I'm really excited to see how how this uh, how this conversation goes. Inshallah, the Bat of Hagalaziza, and it Alam Hagat Kohesa Wimbek. Okay, awesome. سو so, شام احنا دايما بنبدا بالسؤال اللي هو um, how did you how how did Hisham now that that lives in Dab how did that came to be what's what's your life experience ايه اللي خلاك ايه اللي خلاك to get to where you are um, انا عارف ان انت برضو you're you're a lot you're involved in in sustainable uh, development and you push for uh, a cleaner sea you you talk to people what What got you there? احنا في مصر عامة لما بنكبر مش ناس كتير بتتكلم عن الموضوع ده. ف I'm I'm really curious ايه اللي ايه اللي زقك الزقة دي او ايه اللي جابك هنا to start. Alright. Uh, let me just uh, start by saying thank you for having me. دي أول حاجة. Of course. It's my pleasure. Uh, and then how did I get here? That's a very good question. Um, I, I've been living, I've been moving around most of my life. Uh, عشت في في مصر وانا صغير يعني عشت في دوكتوري في الامارات وانا صغير عشت حوالي ست سنين بعد كده I moved to Cairo for a little bit and then I moved to London for a little bit بعدين I moved back to Cairo for a little bit and then finally I moved to Sinai five years ago رحت نويبع الاول وبعدين جدة This was because of my my dad's line of business. He was a journalist. Uh, he was traveling around all the time, and this kind of, of of childhood made me exposed to a lot of different cultures, a lot of different mentalities. خلت ني أشوف ال ال العالم بطريقة مختلفة شوية. خلت ني أشوف إن it's not إن the scope of thinking بتاعنا مش هذا the scope of thinking الوحيد اللي موجود في في العالم. طبعا this was a big Impact, had a huge impact on the way uh, my thinking was 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 uh, developed. Uh, moving forward, Shwaya, the health of the Gamma Pahira, Tharak, Stagalta 9 to 5, Stagalta uh, startups, for corporate, uh, multinationals. Yeah, I mean, I think no, I think I'm going to help you. I mean, our multinationals, the Haddle startups, Haddle uh, NGOs, come in. Uh, and in the end, I reached a point where I was like, "This is not for me." And uh, I was not—I was not born for the nine to five. I was not created for the nine to five. The haga mish mash shamaya mish mish eder nana. And I have to go in a certain time. I have to leave at a certain time. I have to sit on a laptop, process process things like I'm just a computer. The haga ben isbeli ma kanech acceptable cost. So one day uh, I decided to quit everything. Uh, I w- the plan originally was to see Mosul Khalas, to go to the border of Mosul Taini. And this thing, the family in general, was supportive because they were not going to be able to do this. And I was going to be able to do this. And we were like nomads uh, for most of my life. We were all four years here, six years here, five years here. So it was something I was going to be able to do. First, uh, I decided I'm gonna say one last goodbye to Egypt. I took my car, started traveling around, went all over, rocked the lots, rocked the Aswan, rocked the Siwa, rocked the Fayum. Kalam da kan fa alfinu kham astashar. But during the sana di, get sina khamas marrat. Kol marra marra kat isbo, marra isboin, marra shahr shahrin talata. By the end of 2015, I realized and I spent more time. Outside of Egypt, outside of Cairo, sorry, than in Cairo, and most of that time was spent in Sinai. And this was, I guess, kind of my eureka moment in a way. And one day I was, uh, it was, it was on my birthday on the 20, 2017 uh, December. I went up uh, Gabal Katrin, Mount Saint Catherine. I was hiking with uh, with a Bedouin guide. We were the only people on the mountain. There was no one else but us. Uh, coincidentally, it was also his birthday, which was which is a long story I can get into later. Uh, 
I said, his question to me was, why did you choose today? Because most people go on New Year's to celebrate by hiking on top of Mount Catherine. I was like, because it's my birthday. And then that's how I found out. He's like, oh, wow, that's my birthday. It's my birthday too. And that's how we had this connection. Anyway, long story short, I reached the top of the mountain and I see one of the most beautiful sunrises I've ever seen in my life. Uh, you're, as, as I'm hiking up, you're so close to the sky. You can see the stars shining through, he through the heavens. And then there was uh, a rainbow of clouds just before the sun uh, rose from the horizon. The clouds turned, turned into this colorful rainbow. And then the sun rose, and this that was that was the moment where I was like, why do I want to leave Egypt? Why do I want to move out of Egypt? The problem is not Egypt. The problem is, for me at least, Cairo. Yeah. That's the problem. It's not Egypt. Egypt is very beautiful. We have a lot of beautiful nature. We have a lot of beautiful places, a lot of amazing history, a lot of amazing mountains, uh, the Red Sea, everything. So the problem is not... Egypt, it's Cairo, so I just need to move out of Cairo instead of moving out of Egypt. And that was it. And then I, at, at that moment, I decided I went, I hiked back down. I went to a place that, I, that I've that i only been one, once to before, but I felt uh, really at peace there, which was Basota in Nueva, mm -hmm. an eco-lodge. It's probably one of the first eco-lodges to ever, to ever uh, be uh, created in the, in the region Oslan. And the owner is one of the one of the pioneers of eco lodges and eco tourism in Egypt, and he's one of the biggest advocates of the environment. And he 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 started his own initiative for recycling garbage, and he, he protects the corals of the Red Sea. He's an amazing human being, and he was a great inspiration to me. And. Uh, yeah, I went to him and I was like, hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. My experience is in this, this and that. And I want to leave Cairo and I want to come live here. Uh, and then yeah, at, at that point, he was like, um, I can't really uh, uh, kind of like offer you a job. But if there's something that you see you can do here uh, and that can benefit both of us, go for it. And this is, this is where I came up with the idea. I'm going to be... Uh, working in my line of business, which is what I do right now, which is uh, um, adventure consultation. Uh, and it just goes all in hand, like adventure, nature, conservation, the environment, it just goes all hand in hand. And yeah, that's, uh, that's how I decided I'm going to move to Sinai. And I did to Nueva five years ago. I stayed there for a year. And here we are five years later, and I'm in Dahab, and I'm still uh, doing what I'm doing. That's amazing. Uh, the moment, when, when you explain the moment that you were just under the stars and the sun is coming up, and you're like, why, why would I ever leave? I, I, can, I can totally relate to that. We have amazing places throughout the whole country, and it's like, yeah, why? Why would I? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That was, uh, that was, that was very nice. So you talked about being an adventure consultant. Yes. What exactly does that mean? Well, uh, if I, if I could explain it in so many terms, then, then, then it wouldn't be, uh, let, let me try to explain it in the most simple way. I, I worked in, 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 in marketing most of my life, but it was, but what I was doing was mainly marketing related to travel companies. So for example, I was working with, uh, I was a, I was a, a marketing executive in uh, Yahoo, yahoo.com, and I was handling companies like easyjet, booking.com, et cetera, et cetera. And then I moved to another travel company and another travel company. And finally I joined also one of the humans that really shaped who I am today. Also a great inspiration. Maybe you've heard the name, Omar Samra. Oh, wow. uh, I was part of his company for uh, for a year, uh, Wild Guanabana. Uh, it's an adventure, adventure travel company, basically. And this is where I started getting drawn into the adventure side of things more uh, than the travel side of things. Like before that, it was just like, uh, just basic travel, like accommodation, transportation, and that's it. Uh, throughout my journey in uh, Wild Guanabana, I, uh, 
I kind of rediscovered who I am. Like, I, I just remember that as a kid, this is something that I used to love to do. I used to love to go into forests and go swimming and go hiking. And it was just something that I did as a kid. And it was just like second nature to me. But, you know, life just gets, gets uh, consumes you and you get stuck in school and you get stuck in university and you forget, you forget these kind of things and you kind of just go with the flow. But this, this kind of re rekindled my love for nature and adventure in a way. Um, and yeah, I think that's where the journey started. And then when I moved to Sinai, I decided this is what I want to do. And I actually kind of came up with, like, I've heard of the title travel consultant before, but I've never heard of the title adventure consultant before. So I kind of came up with it. And uh, that's what I was doing in Basata on like a, like on a freelancing level in a way where I would uh, create events to attract people to the place and at the same time I would uh, uh, create adventures for the guests to go on to like hiking adventures, diving adventures, uh, mountaineering adventures etc. Then uh, my time in Basata ended, I stayed there for about a year, I moved to Dahab, I was Still doing the same thing more or less for a big, uh, a big uh, scuba diving company here, which I also have to mention, which also is a great advocate for the environment. It's called Scuba Seekers. Uh, they're one of the biggest uh, supporters of uh, the environment and regrowing corals and protecting marine life. Uh, uh, and also, they were a big part of a big part of uh, inspiring me as well, as along with. Basata and uh, Wild Guanwana. Um, so yeah, I joined them and I was I was doing the same thing. And during that that journey, one day I was like, I was also doing adventure consultation for for for, for uh, another company called Gezit. Uh, they're also an adventure travel company. Yeah. And during the during all these things, one day I was like, why don't I do this for myself? Why am I doing this for other companies? But at the same time, I was very happy to work with these uh, with these names and the way and they inspired me in a very big way. Whether it was Wild Guanabana or Scuba Seekers or Basota or Gezif, and they were they were all somehow related to the adventure lifestyle. Whether it was Wild Guanabana and the pure sense of adventure and Gezif, uh, whether it was Scuba Seekers in the in the scuba diving line of adventure, or whether it was Basota in the in the camping holistic uh, kind of uh, uh, adventure lifestyle. Uh, so I decided I'm gonna start some an adventure consultation service, which basically what that does is uh, I consult companies as well as individuals uh, on, uh, on to kind of customize an adventure journey for them, uh, depending on what they like. And I feel like that's kind of my edge uh, my co my company is called Home Adventures. I don't know if that's already mentioned that before or not. And uh, uh, it's it's uh, a portmanteau, so home uh, homead and nomad, uh, so home and nomad together. So home of nomads. Okay. Kind of, uh, the, what I'm yeah. going for. Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a play. It's a play on words, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, so yeah, Home Adventures came into being, and what it does basically is I customize adventure journeys for companies, uh, as well as individuals. I designed a trip from A to Z, including the adventures, the transportation, the accommodation, and it's totally tailored and personalized to the group or to the company uh, as they like. Yeah, and that's pretty much what I do. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. So, في حاجة أنت كنت قلتها there's uh, about the regrowing corals. So, yeah. is that currently happening in Dahab or somewhere in Egypt where we're taking the same approach, you know, as uh, coral gardeners, and they're trying it to regrow the corals? It's not. It is happening, not on a very large scale, on a very individual scale, where some diving centers are doing it here in Dahab. Uh, it is being faced by a little bit of. Uh, bureaucracy from the government of course yeah. uh, but it is happening on a small scale uh, through a, a number of diving centers are actually doing it uh, one of them is scuba seekers uh, another one is called mirage divers uh, but the main thing that most dive centers here do is uh, cleaning we, we do a lot of cleanup 
clean up diets a lot a lot a lot like i remember one of one of my very first dives here in the ab right after i finished my uh, my uh, my diving courses was a clean up dive uh, yeah. and it's something that's quite periodical here uh, there's always one one or another dive center doing it whether it's here or in Sharm el Sheikh maybe and uh, there's always one cent one diving center doing it at least one once a month if not even more uh, so it is something that is always going on we're always trying to raise awareness by asking people not to throw their garbage away there was an, an initiative uh, that of that unfortunately got shut down because of corona where we started uh, stopping single use plastic and uh, the like most of the supermarkets would actually have paper bags or uh, cloth uh, or cloth reusable bags and they would give them away for free for, for free to people and uh, they were starting to kind of push people to like the, the bag the cloth bag for example would be rebranded by the supermarket by the supermarket itself and then if you would come back and reuse the bag you would care, you would get some kind of like little gift or whatever or like a little discount but unfortunately because of corona people started going back to single use things because yeah. because people were scared of infection which is very unfortunate i feel like corona in a way kind of had a good impact on the environment where we all got uh, where where nature sent us all to our rooms and we were uh, we were trapped for a while, and I saw this on a very big scale here last year. The corals were starting to re to thrive again. The fish, the fish, and the marine life started getting closer to the shore. Things were nature was finding its way back in a way oh. uh, during those couple of months that we were all uh, asked to stay in our houses. And it kind of felt like nature was like, you know, you guys have been bad. <laughs> Time <laughs> out. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, it was bad in the sense of we had to start using stuff again. So yeah, yeah, and and I think a lot of the effect of of masks specifically, yeah. um, it's starting to show. Whenever, like even even uh, in a couple a couple weeks back, I was I was in Marsa Alam, which last time I went there, there wasn't even like you couldn't really see plastic or anywhere. But even even there, which is a place that's not as accessible as the rest of Egypt. You still see a lot of, um, you still see a lot of masks specifically yeah. uh, exactly. lying around, which is very sad. And I completely agree that, that whenever the, the, that two months when we were locked down, it was, it was exactly like that. Like Hatta, even as close as Ras Sidr and Anisokhna, dolphin, dolphins were coming so close to shore. Like yeah. you could be standing like water here, and yeah. you have your dolphins like three meters away. Um, yeah. So that was that was very cool to see um, happen when when we did give nature a break and even in Dahab because I did visit throughout the time and it was absolutely absolutely beautiful. You could see the colors slowly coming back. There's more fish, uh, but then I, I went and then I, I came back in, in October or no no September uh, mm -hmm. and then it was it was right after the Eid and then it was yeah. like when, when I went back to order I was like okay this this seems like yeah. it kind of went back again yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah yeah no that's um that's super know, cool. on a positive note still I have to say that now people I feel like now people have become a little bit more aware at least here in the hub a little yeah. bit and they, they are trying even on their own on their own like uh, cost on on their own uh, expense actually buying cloth bags and reusing and that's something that is i notice a lot in that i think the issue the main issue is we just need to raise more awareness like people are now actually getting their own cloth bags but not everyone is aware it's it, 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 it's not it's not a it's not it's like i wouldn't even say 50 50. i, I think the bigger percentage is not aware it's a, sm it's a small percentage just actually aware that's reusing that's actually going and getting refillable bottles and getting paper cloth bags and you know trying to do the right thing uh, so I, I think awareness is what needs to happen which is something i feel like you're trying to do through thalassians which is amazing absolutely yeah and that's that's also that that was also my assumption like i think a very big part of 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 our um of our population 
it doesn't even it doesn't even come to the head like like smoke a cigarette and then they don't really realize that by throwing this here or throwing this there that this enters the ecosystem a bird eats it or it could get thrown by wind and then it gets stuck or leaving like i don't think it even the the process in the head or like where is this gonna end due to a very low level of awareness it doesn't yeah. even hit their head and uh, my assumption is that if, if people know uh, the effects of, of of the actions they take they will likely stop doing it or I at least hope no, no. <laughs> inshallah. Uh, okay, beautiful. Um, so uh, something I wanted to ask you, so you said you've been living in Sinai since 2015. Uh, you're taking part in all these kind of like initiatives. Yeah. What was what was some of the maybe challenges that you faced that you felt like, oh, I don't know if I if I can continue doing this, if there is any, maybe, maybe there isn't. I mean, I don't feel like the challenges, there was, there's definitely challenges, like organizational challenges, just putting everything together, logistics. Mainly, I was always on that side of things, like whichever initiative I worked through, I worked with many, with many environmental and cleanup initiatives in the past. And I was always on the logistics side due to my experience in the area through like hiking, uh, rock climbing, diving, etc. So I kind of knew the area quite well. So I always put in charge of logistics in terms of like what the route would be, where people would go, where where the cleanup, how the cleanup logistics would go. Uh, that was a bit of a challenge to just make sure the logistics are okay and that the route would be okay or the diving site would be okay for all people of all different ages. Because you get a lot of people from different ages that want to participate in these kind of uh, environmental cleanups. So you have to make sure that it's accustomed to uh, everyone's uh, ability, basically. Uh, the challenges were mainly bureaucratic, ma mainly governmental. Uh, I would say that's usually the biggest challenge. We always know how to handle them in a way, uh, but yeah, I think that's mainly it. Mainly bureaucratic governmental challenges, like uh, on why are you doing this? Where are you going? Where are you coming from? Blah, 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 just like, a lot of security issues basically due to the fact that um, uh, Sinai is a border uh, city. Yeah, of course. Uh, of course, uh, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, from from what what you're saying, you don't feel like there was a moment throughout your journey that you felt like, okay, this is maybe maybe a thought that came like this is not for me or this is getting too much. Um, specifically, when we're talking about your sustainable initiative so maybe you're going on a cleanup and they ask you like oh where's your permit or something as as ridiculous yeah. as that or something like that did, did anything did anything that comes to your mind that that maybe happened that you felt like this is so annoying we will never be able to get past that or was it always more like oh no we'll we'll, we'll be able to handle yeah, well, I, no, I wouldn't say anything would, would, would have made me stop, honestly. Like, nothing nothing was challenging enough to make me forget that I have to give back to nature. I have to give back to this. I, I This is the place where I go on these very beautiful adventures and I see these be very beautiful, amazing sights and meet all these wonderful animals and people and mountains and water and like there's nothing that would stop me from giving back to that honestly that's that's amazing to hear i, I actually love that yeah we, we have to, we have to give back we have to pay our dues because it does the sea and uh, i'm i'm more in the sea kind of guy but it, it gives us such it gives us everything right and it's only it's only fair that we that we that we that we pay back right it's it's only fair that we that we give it that attention um it deserves it. okay yeah so on on the on the other hand of of maybe having a strong challenge did you ever have a moment throughout your journey that give you reassurance that you're like something that happened that made you think like yeah 100 percent, i'm on the right track or this is this is it um if you don't want to try like i mean it's a lot of little small moments put together like it's always uh especially after this this time where there was a big uh, push in Dahab to kind of like start uh, using uh, reusable bags and uh, reusable bottles 
I started actually seeing random people that I don't know actually doing it and actually starting to use the reusable bottles, uh, reusable bags. I saw Bedouin kids in the street picking up trash for for no reason. Uh, I started getting contacted by more and more initiatives. Uh, and that's something that kind of pushed me forward even. It, it felt like, oh, I'm kind of starting to get recognized for this, for, for, for being someone who kind of supports this. And I was very happy to get contacted more than once by uh, a couple of different initiatives, including including Thalassians, uh to kind of uh, either do a cleanup or raise awareness or handle the, the logistics for an environmental like cleanup or something like this. And that's, yeah, all of these things just keep on pushing you forward, basically. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um... So I wanted to ask you something. So you talked a lot about the reusable bottles. This mm. is something I personally tried to do in that. Mm. And I wasn't successful, mainly due to where do I fill the bottle from? Um, what, um, what, 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 how does it work? There is, again, it was more successful again before Corona, but it still exists where there is a number of dive centers that have uh, big containers uh, where you can refill your refillable bottles, you will mainly find this in dive centers because dive centers are the ones that are most aware of the problems because they see it every day. They're always it. diving. They're always on the corals. They're always watching the marine life and and the coral uh, health. Uh, so they're the ones that are most aware of the problem and they're the ones that are trying uh, to do the most. Uh, a lot of a number of diving centers, including Mirage divers, including scuba seekers. Uh, and a couple of Liquid Adventures, a couple of other diving centers I can't remember right now, they all have these big tanks where you can go in, refill your water bottle uh, at a fraction of a normal, of buying like a five Egyptian pound uh, big water bottle, you will fill the same water bottle at a fraction of the price. We also have a really cool initiative here in Dahab. Uh, we have these kind of like... Uh, uh, this there's like there's a company that kind of has these uh, big bottles the big blue bottles and okay. it, it kind of it, it refills your bottle uh once a week or whenever you want and that that's kind of like uh, an alternative to going and buying uh, single use uh, plastic bottles and there's a guy who comes up to your house he takes away the empty bottle gives you a fresh new one and they, they have a whole like uh, filtration system for the water uh, and they just refill, refill these big bottles and it's kind of like you buy you buy the big bottle once and then for like I can't remember I think it was like 100 Egyptian pounds the big bottle and then every time you refill it it's just like 30, 30 Egyptian pounds every time you refill the whole bottle and it's about I think it's a, I think it's about 12 liters or maybe even more I can't remember it was, it's a huge bottle it's maybe 15 liters in Okay, so it's it's kind of one of these bottles that go into a dispenser, or exactly, yeah. Oh, okay, bottles, and sometimes you you either have a dispenser, or if you don't, you have these pumps that kind of get installed on the top. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the ones you push. Yeah. Pumps. and there's also some even the, the something that I've noticed here that's starting to like in the supermarkets they're starting to sell the electronic pumps that kind of like go with the push of a button as well. So to, to, to help maybe uh, get people to buy, because I feel like, and I'm not sure if I'm right, but I feel like even buying those bigger bottles and keeping them and filling them up, even if you're just going to use them once, this is still way better than buying, like let's say small bottles, right? 100%, 100%. Yeah. If you have that at your house and plus a refillable bottle and you just refill your bottle, Every time before you go out, you're, you're always going to have water. Like you're, you're, you, would, you would not need to buy plastic bottles at a supermarket. And this is one of the, especially in summertime, like everyone buys water because we're thirsty like all the time when you're in the house, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's that's very good to hear. A lot of that stuff I, I didn't know about. And I'm, 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 so, I'm so happy I'm, get, I'm getting to know that. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, something I wanted to uh, also get into. So uh, if you had one wish that would be granted mm -hmm. um what would it be one wish just one uh, you only get one <laughs> i 
guess my speaker would just be more considerate. That's it. Yeah, that's my wish. I just wish people would more, be more considerate. If that happens, we wouldn't have a problem to begin with. Like, if you just think for a second before throwing something away, what the impact would be, or think for a second before you you uh, you buy a single-use plastic bottle, or think for a, for a second before you throw away your your cigarette butt, or think for a second before you throw that paper towel, everything would be that. It's just that simple. Like, just if if everyone just decides to be Consider it, then we wouldn't even have this problem. We wouldn't have to raise awareness because I feel like it is common sense, especially, especially just by walking in the streets, not just in Dahab, like that, either it's Dahab or Cairo. If you walk down the street, you're going to see a shit ton of garbage. You're going to see plastic bottles everywhere. You're going to see garbage everywhere. And that's not a pretty sight. It's not, it's not something that you want to see while you're walking down the street. I feel like here it's just more in your face because uh, we're so close to the sea and when when you see a, a, like a plastic bag or a plastic bottle floating floating on the surface you, you kind of think like if this is what's on the surface i wonder what's underneath what's under like, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah it's just very horrible to think about and i feel like yeah that's that's yeah that's what why it's a bit people are just a little bit just a little bit more aware here because, yeah, because they, they get to see that stuff. I remember uh, two years ago, if it, even in Blue Lagoon, I was, I was walking down past the lagoon and um, I found a bag on the, I found a bag on the, on, the, on the beach, on the rocks that came from, came from Jordan. So it's, it's yeah. really not, it's really not a problem just here. It's, it's, it's more of a, it's more of a global problem. And I completely agree. If, if, if someone just a little bit considers or have, have empathy towards like thinking every action I take, what would that lead to? Uh, I think we would be so much better off. So that's, a, that's an amazing question. Yeah. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Like we, we know, you know that this nature is a resource and you're kind of using it up by doing this. And it is a big issue. Where like, I like what you just mentioned about, like I actually have a juice box from Jordan here in my house that I've had for, for years. And I was like, I got, I picked it up from the beach in, in Nueva when I was living in Basata once. And I was so curious. I still have that box still today, actually inside in my room. And I was so curious, how did this get here? And one day I actually traveled to Jordan to kind of, it was, it was, a, it was, a, I wasn't going especially for this. It was like a rock. Of course, yeah. It was a rock climbing trip that I was going with a friend of mine and and I found this juice box, it's called Zeki, and it's like in the supermarkets everywhere there. And it's the same issue. People just throw in the street and then the wind picks it up and then it just travels through the sea and it comes all the way to here. Uh, and the thing is, most of the wind actually blows in from that side to this side. Sorry, most yeah. of the wind blows in from Saudi Arabia, from Jordan and from Palestine all the way to this side. And it just, it just brings out everything out onto the surface here. And yeah, it just yeah, it's a global problem, basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so we talked about one wish you had. If you had to choose to remove one obstacle, um, that would maybe removing the obstacle would help us be better, build a, a more sustainable Egypt over the long run. What do you think that obstacle would be? Uh, an obstacle would probably be less bureaucracy. <laughs> At some point. Yeah, that would, that would, that would help a lot. I mean, like, if, if it was just easy for people to maybe install a big garbage can somewhere without having to go back to the government every time or to have more recycling plants instead of, like, a lot of these initiatives are actually personal initiatives. Like, there is a recycling plant in... Uh, in uh, in Nueva, that kind of like uh, separates the garbage and then compresses it into these big blocks and then it sends it to Cairo. Uh, in the end, it gets sent to Cairo to get recycled. It was started through uh, the owner of Basoto, uh, one of the pioneers here, honestly, in the in the environment field. I have to say, and um, I feel like if if there was less bureaucracy, more people would do it. Yeah, 
if, if, I'm, if every time I have to go to the government to put up a garbage can or to get a permit to do a cleanup, it, it just makes me feel like, why, why, why? What's the point? You know? Yeah. And is that the reality of it? Like, let's say I want to get 100 people and go do a cleanup in throughout from Asana to Laguna. Do I actually need to go get a permit for that? Again, no. But you might get asked for it. Which to me is is weird. Why? Why do you bother? If if because it's a gathering. Anything that's bigger than like I don't know, ten people is a big gathering. So to them, it's like, what are you guys doing? It feels like a security threat to them. You know, even though we're just like we're just like you know we're just chill people. We're cleaning up the beach. Cleaning up. You know, but to them, any big gathering is considered an issue. It's like, what are these guys doing? Are they you know are they plotting up something? No, we're just. Cleaning up, Literally cleaning up the sea. Cleaning up the beach, cleaning up the sea, cleaning up the streets. You know, or just making things things look clean. Yeah. And what about putting garbage cans or recycling cans? Do you go? Do you need to go get? Uh, Depends on the size. Bowls? If it's like a, if it's a, if it's like a kind of the, like a a normal sized garbage can, then that's okay. But if it's something that's big, you you will have to ask for a permit. I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Good to know. Um, okay, so I, I, I lived, so I, I grew up, I grew up here in Egypt and then I left to university in Canada when I was there. Um, and I lived there for eight years, kind of still go back and forth. Um, that's when I really learned about recycling, helping the environment. This is how I could help. This is how I could decrease my carbon footprint. Unfortunately here in Egypt, we don't really, um, have that, told to us, no one tells us that while we're growing up, right? So uh, a lot of a lot of people, I don't think they even, uh, even if they want to preserve the sea, they don't know how to. So I guess my question to you is, how do you think common everyone, people in general, Egyptians, should act to help uh, preserve the sea? Like maybe it's uh, a bunch of things that we can do to... Uh, uh, help decrease our, our footprint on the world and, and help build a, a better a better future for, for all of us? Um, I think... I think it has to start with awareness and education. That's where it needs to start. Because if, if that exists in place, then, then, then there wouldn't be a problem. And basically, that's what you're doing right here. You're trying to raise awareness. And I feel like even on a very small personal level, that's what we need to do. Like if we, if we notice something uh, that's not okay, that's wrong, we should talk about it. Like if you notice someone throwing a cigarette butt, be like, hey, why don't you throw it in the garbage? Not in a very confrontational way, just in a very, yeah. you know, like raising awareness. Like you're educating a person. You're you're sharing your you're sharing knowledge. You're not you're not being confrontational. You're just sharing knowledge. Like. Just let them know that it's just better to throw the cigarette butt away in a different place, or it's better to use refillable bottles or whatever it is that's happening in front of you. Just speak about it, raise, raise, raise awareness, share your knowledge. And I feel like if that happens, every, it, it's just going to have like a ripple effect. It's just going to keep on getting passed around. Okay. So, so that's in terms of, <clears throat> that's in terms of maybe, um, things that people who have a little bit of knowledge on, on the subject can, can share. But what, what do, like, like how can a person, how can a, a person that maybe first time to go to the, the, it's their first time there, what are like concrete things that they can do to um, leave it better? Or they don't necessarily better, but things that they can do so they don't hurt the environment as much. Um, okay. Like if we're yeah. talking specifically about Dahab, I would say uh, come with a cloth bag, so you don't have to get single-use plastic when you go to the supermarket. Uh, there are quite a few garbage cans here around Dahab, so if you're someone who who doesn't want to carry garbage with them, maybe have another like like bag or, or a pocket in your bag where you carry your garbage and then when you reach a garbage can just throw it away there if you can come with a refill, refillable bottle that would be amazing you can even if you're here on a short on a short trip instead of getting a bunch of single-use plastics you can get one of these big jugs 
Again, they're not great, but they are better than having five bo water bottles. You can have just one big bottle and then just re fill up fill up from that bottle. And we we act like in that we have a lot of signs everywhere trying to raise awareness. There's there's a there's a big poster that's hanging. It's it was made by the Chamber of Diving and uh, Water Sports that has a lot of these like colorful colorful pictures that that um, are inviting people not to step on the corals, not to uh, not to throw away garbage, not to not to uh, try and take any shells or not to take anything from the sea. So there is a like there is there, it's it's everywhere if you just pay attention basically. Okay, okay, that's that's very cool. Um, so. I kind of wanted to to take this opportunity right now to to kind of give you the mic, if you would say, and and ask you what is a message you'd want the world to know. What what does like if if you were talking to the world right now, what would you what would you want to tell them? Uh, I would tell them we. Uh, I mean, I don't want to sound too dramatic, but we uh, we only have one planet. We only have. Uh, one ecosystem uh, to live with, and again, if, I'm not. I'm not going to tell you leave it for your kids. Be selfish for yourself, like for your right, for right now. Just be selfish, and and if like I'm, I'm actually asking people to be selfish, and not do this to the nature around them, because you're not going to get to enjoy it. You're not going to get yeah. to see these wonderful places, and. Uh, get and and just get in, get in touch with your roots because at the end of the, the day we we are nature we are not we're not a, we're not an alien we are part of the ecosystem we are part of nature and we just need to take care of it, it, it we only we only have this one planet that we need to, to take care of wherever you are on the world wherever you are on a global scale and uh, yeah just be selfish be selfish so you can enjoy it for yourself and then hopefully the future generations will uh, will enjoy it too. If you're selfish, you're actually it's actually a good thing for the environment. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I love that. I love <laughs> that. Um, so, is there anything right now that you're uh, that you're working on, or something that about to start any current initiatives, or maybe over the next month or two that you would wanna that you would wanna share about? Uh, maybe you wanna talk about. Homad, what you do, something, something that's that's coming there. It's uh, sure. yeah. Um, there, are, there is nothing specifically in the. There is no like cleanup initiatives. Uh, however, through through Homad, through Homad Adventures, I'm uh, currently working on something to raise awareness towards the other side of the Red Sea which is the Red Sea Mountains. Uh, again, a big part of our ecosystem, a big part of our environment. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the garbage that gets blown away also goes into the mountains and it gets stuck in the trees in the mountains and it gets stuck in the rocks. And I, like for, for a while, it felt like maybe the mountains were the last escape where this is the last untouched space by man, basically. But unfortunately uh the wind gets everywhere and the garbage gets into places where you wouldn't even think there might be garbage there uh, i i person like other than my adventure consultancy as uh, i work as a rock climbing instructor and uh, currently i'm starting this initiative called uh, climb egypt uh it's on instagram and on facebook it's a very new initiative. It's still in the very early stages. And the idea of it is, uh, or the slogan of it is honoring mountains and uh, climbs. And uh, basically, I just want to see the beauty of, of the, I want to show the beauty of nature and the beauty of uh, rock climbing to people. So they just understand how precious and how gorgeous the nature we have in Egypt is. And maybe by doing that people will 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 be affected by it and you know be inspired to preserve it even more 
I love it. I love it. And uh, maybe if I'm even still around, I'll, I'll try to join you in that because I've been trying to rock climb for a very long time. I do a lot of things by the sea. I haven't yet <laughs> conquered the mountains. I just did hikes, but <laughs> but not not actual climbing ever. <laughs> please, please come join me anytime. It's literally by, the, it's right by the sea. It's like less than 20 minutes from the sea. So that's one, hey, of, the no. of, one of the best things about the Red Sea is that the sea is right there and the mountains, mountains are right there. And it's just, it's an amazing, amazing we have one of the best, uh, like, uh, red sea, like diving spots, hiking spots in the world. The Red Sea is an amazing place to visit, honestly. And especially Dab, it's like, it's hugged by the mountains, right? It's yeah. just, it's, it's surreal there. Uh, okay, awesome. Well, that's kind of everything I, I, I had. Uh, I think this was, I think this was amazing. I had, I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot from you. Thanks, yeah. thanks, thanks for coming here, man. Thank you. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, no, of course. And be. and yeah, absolutely. And I know in the next um, in the next little bit, I will definitely need some some consultations on uh, where where to clean because Thalassens uh, is a, is a two tier is a two tier organization. So our purpose is is to first clean the sea, and by cleaning the sea, we're bringing awareness to uh, to. W- as to, as to why we shouldn't act the way or, or what's the impact or let people know what impact they do when they throw a cigarette butt or leave a bottle behind. Uh, so so I'm, I'm sure we will be collaborating even more in the future. Oh, yeah. um, so, oh, yes, yes. And yeah, again, thank you so much. This was, this was very informative. Very happy to uh, very happy. Yeah. Right on, right on. Uh, okay, Sham. So um, I think I think that's that's everything I wanted to 